person I co-teach with uh, had Pam as a postdoc, and as part of my lectures, I talk about the EID fellowship, and people might want to consider this as a career in, you know, if they're interested in public health. So I'd met Tam, um, and then she expressed an interest. Uh, we helped her through the EID application process. We uh, put in a proposal. Uh, we helped her put together a proposal. She submitted, and she did the hard work of getting uh, accepted and we were awarded uh, her um, for a two-year fellowship. We knew and why we had a, uh, we were interested in her is she had a very strong background in uh, molecular uh, diagnostics. She's working in the parasitology field, but she was proficient in PCR, real-time PCR. Uh, and uh, the person I co-teach with gave her a glowing reference as being a hard worker and so on. So for you know, 18 month period, we had brought her on. I think our research billet uh, had been written. We wanted her involved in a, a national lab system uh, grant we were involved in uh, doing an assessment of antimicrobial susceptibility testing around the country. Mm -hmm. And to uh, do a questionnaire of our clinical laboratories, our sentinel labs around the state. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, assess the, uh, their susceptibility uh, testing methods and what they're seeing and so on. Well, she did that work uh, and got it published and presented and then she expressed a little interest. We had given her a rotation throughout the laboratory. Uh, she expressed an interest to do some rotation work uh, and uh, apply some of her molecular skills in diagnostics and she had some interest in virology. Uh, right about that time, we had been doing our work with the pyro sequencing uh, with the viral resistance to amantadine. Mm -hmm. And uh, we wanted to finish up that evaluation and the work we were doing with that. So we asked if she'd be interested. We put her on that project, which is very much a molecular based uh, technology. So she got involved with that and actually wrapped up that evaluation and study. And um, we were able to get our data together collaboration with uh, New York and um, uh, get that published and Tam became our senior author for that. Well, as part of a rotation and we're skills again in PCR, we got her into the influenza diagnostics. So she learned about uh, uh, the five target assay, the IBD, and became mm -hmm. proficient uh, with that. Well, that brings us to 2008-2009, uh, the flu season. Uh, she had been uh, uh, working in diagnostic laboratory, and then we were approached by CDC. Actually, uh, some months more, I, th I believe it was summer of, of 08, maybe a little before that, to begin to look at a scheme using that five target assay uh, to do a pooling of specimens. Uh, to see in a period of low influenza prevalence where we're trying to find those first cases of influenza, could we use their assay on a pooled sample of specimens, either a pool of five or a pool of ten, which essentially would uh, increase our capacity, either fivefold or tenfold. So uh, we had done all the preliminary uh, studies uh, pretty much through the spring and summer uh, of 2009. And Tam became more or less uh, the lead on doing those uh, uh, types of studies. And um, we had been continuing through this as we got into the normal flu season uh, in 2008 2009. It was a very mild influenza season, so uh, Tam was working on the pooling trial, still doing some work with the, the pyro sequencing, and occasionally helping out, keeping herself in touch with the diagnostic lab using the PCR assay. Uh, well, then the events with 2009 H1N1 um, occurred. Uh, like all public health labs, um, uh, although we were well cross trained and we had adequate uh, equipment, very quickly uh, there was a lot of stress put on the staff. So actually, Tam stepped right up and uh, we were able to plug her in and she could participate. Um, especially for, for those first critical weeks, uh, about the first three, four weeks, is one of our lead diagnostic people um, using the, the five target assay. And then as soon as the um, uh, 
2009 H1N1 specific assay came out, since it's on the same platform and essentially the same method, uh, we were able to get her involved doing that. So she actually became one of our lead diagnosticians, which during a period of about, oh, I'd say three or four weeks where we were essentially running about 15, 16 hours a day, uh, working on an awful lot of specimens, she just fit into the rotation. So it took a considerable amount of pressure off the other diagnostic staff who had other things to be doing. Um, and then it was right about that uh, time as well, um, once we know really something major was happening um, uh, with the 2009 H1, that working with CDC, uh, we hadn't finished the pooling trial yet. And we wanted to get that completed and get the necessary data so they could get a uh, emergency use authorization in place. Whether we could use it over the summer or this autumn, at that time we weren't sure. We kind of doubted we could because there was so much influence already in the community. Uh, there wouldn't have been any advantage gain, be gained by the pooling. Nevertheless, we wanted to finish that and get the necessary data uh, so they could get EUA authorization if we're able to use it um, uh, in the future. So uh, actually, Tam then took that on to complete those final studies, and that's work she actually carried out uh, through the summer, and we were able to gain a month extension on our EID fellowship to really wrap up that series uh, of experiments. She left us, I don't remember the exact date, sometime in October uh, for an opportunity out in the private sector out on the West Coast. Uh, but even today, uh, since there's still a lot of data manipulation uh, to, to get that EUA, um, she's involved with still working on the data. She wrote up a, a standard operating procedure that can be used now in anticipation of this being able to be rolled out uh, to other public health laboratories. Uh, she'll be the lead author on one, if not two, of the papers that describe this, or co-lead author, with obviously, with CDC. Um, and we continue to stay in contact with her. We haven't been involved in the EID program from its inception. This is, this is really a great example of a success story. And there have been many. This is uh, one of several first-hand experiences I've had that have really turned out to have a terrific ending. And this one was so unusual just because the odds of having that fellow there with the necessary skills to actually be one of the primary responders during a pandemic is actually a phenomenal experience and great luck for us because that was capacity we really Amazing opportunity all the way around. It's a terrific person, one of the best young investigators, best young scientists I've worked with and, and able to mentor in my career. Uh, she is special. And wherever she ends up, private sector, uh, back in public health, wherever, she's going to do just terrific. Plus, CDC realized how good she was and that relationship. She got to know the people down there, um, Joe Miller, and, and so on, worked closer with her. So. She has a lot of opportunities ahead for her if she chooses to take that career path back to public health.